in ancient times, and I'm not sure what you think of as ancient puppetry. Maybe you can tell me that first. What is ancient time for puppetry? Is it like last year? Is it like a hundred years ago? Is it like when the Greeks were having gods on islands? When is the ancient time? It's actually like the beginning of time. Puppetry has been an ancient form of art for centuries, and it's been around longer than golf? Yes, it has. Do you, do you play golf, Tommy? I don't. He does. Paul plays golf. I don't know how long golf has been around, but it's been around since the beginning of time? Yes, it has. Amazing. Well, I guess I'm learning about golf and puppets today. What was the first kind of puppet? So it had something to do with shadows? The first kind of puppets were shadow puppets indeed. Believe it or not, it used to be known during Pangea. Pangea. Caveman days. Caveman days? <laughs> A's with their fingers and... So people would make shapes with their hands and it would show a, a, an image that's just like a shadow on a wall? That that's what it used to be, but then it evolved into some... into a figure made, made out of animal skin and make it flexible. Oh, so it evolved. So puppetry has evolved from just being shadows to being creatures that are more recognizable with costumes, if I'm understanding correctly. Yes. So when did this thing called Bunraku begin? It's called Bunraku. Bunraku. And what is Bunraku? It's a complicated form of puppetry performed by three people. One with the head, one are bringing the arms, and one are bringing the feet. And it originated in, in Osaka, Japan. If we looked at this particular puppet, somebody would be doing something with the mouth, and then another person would be managing the hands, and then another would be deciding whether or not, you know, the puppet was going to be relaxing on a beach with his feet up. His feet would move. Yeah? Okay. Dance, maybe. maybe yes, dance. that's when they would do it. They would dance. So the person who was the puppeteer is, is actually a team, and they actually needed to know also about dance movement. Yes, it could take like 15 to 30 years to learn that Bunraku craft. Oh, my goodness. Are you, Paul, trying to learn that craft? Are you working with a team of other puppeteers? Not exactly. No, not at this time. So that was a long, long time ago. Gummy doesn't look that old. I was not around during then. You weren't around then, Gummy? How about the 20th century, Gummy? Were you around then? Do you remember anybody from the 20th century of puppetry? Tony Sarge had a traveling marionette show, and... Believe it or not, he was the creator of the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade floats and called them upside-down marionettes with people holding on to the string floats below rather than upwards. Marionettes is the above. Gummy is not a marionette. What? Gummy is not a... You're not a marionette, are you, Gummy? What did you say? Are you a marionette? No, oh, that's right. You're a friendly monster. I'm yes, sorry. Yes, thank I keep, you. I, from marionettes to floats, then there was a ventriloquist type of... Chuck McCann folks. and Edgar Berger and Charlie McCarthy. All of those people had a friend like you? Yes, and they did those comedy sticks. They, so they were typically funny. Have you and Gummy ever done anything funny together? In that workshop he was in... We did improv. How are you going to feel about someone stealing a cookie from you, Gummy? Hey, that was my cookie. It was, but now it's mine. Please, let's, please, let's share. That sounds like the perfect idea. I will share my cookie. And you're Eat. eating yours right away, so no one else can take another piece. I... What's your favorite childhood story, Gummy? I can't remember. Did you have a red wagon? Okay, for my fifth birthday, they everybody rode with me on the favorite red wagon. You know where I've seen red wagons lately? 
Every year, some ladies have an annual plant sale by the train station, and they all pull out the little red wagons and fill them with plants. And then people are able to take the plants and bring them to their cars if they buy them. Isn't that a great use for a little red wagon? Yeah. Who is Burr Kilstrom? Burr Kilstrom was the creator of Kuka Farinali, that vintage TV show with the Kuka Palton players with no script, and they would sing songs with Fern Allison and advertise sponsors and oh, okay. sponsors, and he began performing when he was a little kid performing shows in his neighborhood, and he performed at the World's Fair. I believe that we wouldn't call Kermit necessarily a puppet. We might call him a... What, what Gummy? Do you know what he's called? Is it a puppet or is it a... Muppet. Muppet. And what makes a puppet a Muppet? Jim Henson first saw puppets on when he first got his first TV set in 1950. And while it was unplanned, he wanted a career in TV. After his first three years, years he took it more seriously after a trip to Europe. And then he, wanted, he gave puppetry a reboot. So he wanted to be on TV, but maybe he wasn't as cute as Kermit. And so instead he found a different way to get on TV, kind of <laughs> literally behind the scenes. So he built puppets to, for a local Washington, D.C. station for a career. Mm -hmm. He built them out of foam rubber to give them... Um, flexibility and human movements. Ah, very flexible. He added rods, rods for lifelike movements. Is that what's going on with Gummy over there? A rod movement? What? They just told me, told me to clap. Clap. Uh huh. Are you clapping, Gummy? Did, did something happen that was worthy of a clap? Did you? Yes. Make, yes. I'm mentioning my favorite. Talent clapping. This gentleman who wanted to be in TV, his name again was Jim Henson. Jim Henson. He created staging for puppets, but then did he created the actual characters as well? He used to do all the work, but then he gained a lot of friends and they helped him collaborate. Oh, it was a collaboration. Again, teamwork in puppetry sounds like we heard in history that it took three individuals to create the movement of an entire puppet. Yes, and uh, unlike the past, he had a monitor placed so the performers could see what they were doing. And, and the code is, in order to perform with a monitor, I mean, in order to find the performance, the person has to be aware of what the camera, eye of the camera is seeing. Okay. He introduced foam rubber into creations to make them more human-like. He created sets that relied on monitors and cameras. And can you show us a little bit more with Gummy? Possibly using a monitor again? Yes. Sometimes the performers would lie down or stand up based on the sets being elevated to six to eight feet. And a monitor helps to find their performance. They would also lie rolling dollies for live locations while they're lying down, and they would, when they stand, they stand sideways with their feet stanced up and head lower down. I don't know if their head's not to be seen, and the practice head needs to be back, center, front, center, and right, center, left, center as a warm-up. And the uh, four fingers on top operates the ma upper jaw, and the thumb operates the mandible. The mandible? Is that part of the ch chin? Yes. So puppetry has a lot to do with making a creature appear to talk? It, all forms of puppetry involve telling a story and catching the audience with appropriate eye focus.
And are we seeing Gummy in action? Can Gummy tell us a story? On the first time Gummy met Kermit, was there such a, an occasion? Sorry, but people mistake me for him. Really? So sometimes people pass you on the street and say, are you Kermit? I'm, I want your autograph. Is that what happens? Yes, and I tell them that I'm a friendly monster. Is there a line of monsters that you come from that are especially friendly? I mean, how does a monster become friendly? Based on how our families were raised. Oh, so you were raised to be kind. Yes, raised to be kind. Is that why you told me that I should share the cookie with you? Yes. And is that also why you ate it so fast that no one else could share it? It's a monster habit. It's a monster habit of just eating fast. Yes. All right. Is there anything else you'd like to tell us, Gummy, or your hand, literally your handler, Paul? What? Do you have a handler, Gummy? What? What? I'll let him speak. So you see, Susan, mm -hmm. my interest in watching public TV shows, mainly Kermit the Frog, has inspired me for TV puppetry and me taking that workshop. I took a workshop to learn more about how to be a puppeteer, and now are you thinking about the stories that you and Gummy might be telling in the future? We, we may be starting. You may. And if you do, will we be seeing more of you here on Studio W? Because we are a uh, TV show place. Who knows where you, what you might see me or him. We don't know. But I look forward to seeing you again, Gummy. Can we shake hands? And yes. Good to see you. Good to meet you. And that mysterious handler, Paul. Good to meet you again, Kermit. And your friend, I don't think I got your name. Does this particular puppet have a name? No. Okay. <laughs> not telling me the name. It's a secret. Look at that. I'm a puppeteer. Tune in another time for a puppet story.